My name's Sam Craven. My disability is cerebral palsy. Mostly affects my legs and my left arm. I started helping in his classroom when he was little and became a teacher. Every stage was a, what are the options? What are the modifications that have to be made? All that kind of stuff. I have a note taker who takes the notes and gives me the paper at the end of the class. Thinking about each step and how to get support. The people in education are really helpful, the people at the school. He's very much more assertive, which he's had problems with before, voicing what he needs. There have been a couple of times that I've had to voice my own concerns on testing, what do I need to do, how do I need to get it done. He's both this last semester and the, and the semester now, He's taking classes at DVC. One was a sports psychology class and one was a, a coaching class. I'm actually trying out for the Paralympics next year, which are in Rio de Janeiro. I see him being totally independent and living on his own. I see him being successful as a coach. When Sam Craven was, was two years old, the, the doctors um, said to my parents that, uh, that he, would, he wouldn't do anything in life. He would be nothing more than, than, a, than a vegetable and continuously he has proved them wrong and everybody else wrong. I think to get an education, you have to have drive, and drive is what makes you want to do something. If you don't have drive, you're just gonna wanna sit around all day and do nothing. But people have said, if you wanna get ahead in this world, you have to put yourself out there. Otherwise, you won't get anywhere. My name is Andrew Smith. I'm 22 years old and here we are at the beautiful St. Mary's College. At the age of three and a half, I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome. Kids aren't allowed to fail very often in our society today. You know, failure is not a bad thing. Uh, you know, failure, a collection of failures is how you get to success. Um, and that really sort of became our motto in getting him, you know, through school and into college and wherever he was. People were picking on me one day at school. They said that, hey, you know, I was a sissy and that, you know, I might as well just go off and be a choir boy. Well, what did I do? I went off and became a choir boy. It was one of the things that really helped me become a better person. And you were working hard alongside your friends every day, and you all just learn to love. I started Taekwondo at the age of nine. There, I had tons of experience learning how to form a class and use the curriculum that I've been taught. College is almost in indescribable with the crazy things that can happen on a daily basis. You are living suddenly in this place where Everyone around you just wants to do something. In many ways, it is more strict in terms of its rules, and in many ways, you know, there are no rules. So you constantly have to find a balance. Things would be going fine when I was moving in, but as I found that I was getting deeper and deeper into the semester, the work would get harder. To, uh, I would kind of fall off of my normal sleep schedule. Then I wasn't eating as well. I tried out for uh, the school play. Even my roommate at the time was in it too. So we had this wonderful bonding experience. Teaching is really the only thing that I logically have been building myself up to do. So I've been teaching Taekwondo for seven years. I've been uh, learning music and teaching music to others. The more music degrees you get, then the more you can charge for lessons. I need to challenge myself in order to learn. I need to put myself in a different situation in order to overcome what I never thought could be overcame. My name is Elliot Cole Schneider and I have autism. I was diagnosed with autism fairly late. I was 13 years old. I, I actually did not tell anyone about my autism until much later, I thought I had to hide it. I was, yeah, I was a little afraid because, you know, I didn't want people to judge me any more than they already did. You know, homework was always a struggle. But I was, I went to resource. They sort of lightened my load by not making me do uh, homework. 
eighth grade onward, I got a little school phobic and I struggled from anxiety, I struggled from social anxiety, struggled with depression, and I was just incapable of going to school. So I just couldn't do it. And I, yeah, I never ended up passing high school. Inside of me, I felt like I wasn't gonna go anywhere. I thought, I, I'm never gonna be able to have a job. I'm gonna live in a group home for the rest of my life. There was a brief part of me that wanted to go to college. I don't think at that point in my life it was a good idea. Like, I think if I had started college then, I would have just f failed like everything else. You know, every schooling at that point, for many years, I had just, you know, not been able to do it. One thing I thought I was gonna do was I wasn't gonna start become, I was gonna become a professional YouTuber. What I did, did come of it, was I learned editing. And so, that's what I really realized. Editing was really something that I enjoyed and something that I could possibly get good at. With the vocational training, it was kind of, you know, what you needed to succeed, they were able they were able to give to me. That was definitely helpful, the fact that I was able to get the support I needed and not be like, well, you should be doing this yourself, because, you know, you, sometimes you need a little support before you go off and do something on your own. And it was something, it was, I was given the opportunity to do something that most people probably would have said, oh, he can't do that. But because they gave me the opportunity and it was something I really cared about, I was able to do it. With here, if I made a mistake, they, they would just help me get past the mistake and not do it again instead of just putting this enormous stress on me. We all sort of, we were sort of a small group and so it was expected that you start, you get to know your, your classmates. And we all worked together as a team. I was able to be in a stress-free environment that sort of helped me learn social skills. I, leap, I jumped leaps and bounds in my own ability to talk with people. The one thing that the vocational training did is though they would help you with things that you didn't know how to do. Once you knew how to do them, they expected you to do it. I didn't have the learned helplessness, you know. I didn't feel like I have to have other people do the thing for me. I'm now uh, teaching full-time uh, and an assistant editor at the, at the Futures Ford Film Workshop that I once was a student at. I will continue to work, you know, at the workshop for as long as, as I can. And eventually I would like to you know, move on to being a, an editor full-time. And I also considering doing more more public speaking and just like do comedy. You know, being here at the workshop really taught me sort of bravery that I feel like I can actually, you know, speak in front of people now. And I want to be able to become more independent so I can travel on my own, learn to, you know, get places on my own and learn to eventually live on my own. There's definitely a point in my life I feel that going to college would be a great idea. But right now I do not feel, feel it necessary because of all the training I've gotten. But I will never rule out the idea of college.